Lee, what about for sonographers? How much clinical time is involved? It's probably about the same amount, roughly. Um, the balance um, can be a little challenging for students that are uh, maintaining families or need to maintain jobs and that type of thing. But um, I don't know off the top of my head the exact number of clinical hours that are, provi are, are required, but by the end of the second year, um, I know that the students are going to clinicals at least four of the five days out of the week, wow. and they're expected to put in at least eight hour days. Um, and it's a very rigorous program um, in terms of the demands on the student. However, our promise back to them is that when they graduate, they will be fully eligible, and not only just eligible, but um, fully capable mm -hmm. of taking their board exams and passing them and being successful. Now, you said the word rigorous, and I am curious, um, that it's a rigorous physical job as well. It's not just pushing buttons, I, I guess in both uh, professions. This is true. I mean, you're dealing with patients. You're s dealing with very sick people on a number of occasions, um, people that cannot move on their own that will need assistance. Um, so as there are some lifting responsibilities and, and that fall under the patient care mm -hmm. um, side of things. Uh, there's also uh, ultrasound in particular has a, a special concern with ergonomics and keeping the sonographer safe as they're scanning because there are times when you are in a hospital setting and uh, you have to go up to the floor uh, where an inpatient might be very sick and unable to move at all where you are going to find yourself mm. having to contort your own body in order to reach certain scanning windows. And so we stress that in the program, how to take care of yourself as the sonographer yeah. besides having to take care of the patient. And is there any danger in terms of radiation for someone in the field that's rounded every day? Right, that was, that's always a concern of new students coming in and, and it's one that you hear about in the newspaper about being around radiation and it's considered radi uh, occupationally safe. Um, certainly we are around um, an energy level that is potentially damaging, um, but as radiographers we're trained how to uh, protect ourselves and as I indicated it's considered occupationally safe. We mm -hmm. don't have any unusual um, pathologies from long term that the general public doesn't uh, have. We're not a, don't have any more than anybody else. So it, it's it's actually very safe. It's but safe it, to it do. is normal for people to kind of question that. I, I believe it. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Now uh, we were talking about working with patients, and um, Emily, I have to ask you now that you've been through the program, you're almost finished. The first time you worked with an actual patient, what was it like? It must have been so scary. Yeah, very scary. Um, you're going in the room with a patient and trying to do exams by yourself and you don't want to hurt them and you have to move them and position them. So it's, it's really nerve wracking. I, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the ways students get practice is with somebody named Pixie. Tell us about Pixie. Oh yes, Pixie. Well Pixie's our humanoid and she's, um, well it's a female and mm -hmm. she resembles a female. Uh, she has bones, all the bones of the body, and she also has some organs, as we indicated, since we can x-ray stomachs and kidneys, she has those. She's quite heavy, she's about 120 pounds, so students not only get to practice taking actual x-rays on her, they actually get a chance to lift her and move her because wow. it's not uncommon for, as Lee was saying, it's not uncommon for us to go up and do portable x-rays, people who simply can't move, so we're doing a lot of lifting, so they get their patient care practice lifting pixie. Wow, what a great uh, tool to be learning yeah, on. It really is. Um, Lee, you talked about earlier that you work uh, at the Children's Hospital and you work with young people. What are some of the special challenges uh, working with younger people and their families? Oh, wow. Well, um, first of all, it requires a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also it requires a level of professional maturity. And it's not just in pediatrics, but also in the ultrasound field in general. Um, you're dealing with sick people, you're dealing with very concerned families. Um, sometimes those concerns come out in a variety of ways that can include anything from you know, emotional upset to mm -hmm. anger to um, just very, being very calm and not saying much. Mm. Um, so it really requires a person who is able to listen to those kind of cues um, to take information from uh, their patients and the families and to be able to communicate very effectively uh, in difficult situations sometimes. So it's not just a matter of being good at the technology, you actually have to be a compassionate 
kind Absolutely. of person, a good listener. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, you got into the field uh, because of some of your own experiences. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I actually switched careers. Mm -hmm. uh, my background leading up to ultrasound was completely non-medical. Uh, but when I began having children, I have three wonderful boys, and unfortunately had very high-risk pregnancies with all three. And especially with my second one, ultrasound made a huge difference mm -hmm. in my choices uh, in terms of the delivery. And it made such a difference that impressed upon me that I wanted to make that level of difference on a day-to-day -day basis for other people. And so yeah. I went back to school uh, and I graduated from the Montgomery College program myself not too long ago mm -hmm. and um, became a sonographer myself. So it's very meaningful to me. Just in the very few seconds we have left, what's the outlook? Is this a field where we need more people? Absolutely. As the baby boomers are aging, as r radiographers like myself are coming out of the field, um, and as the need for di diagnostic imaging is doing so much more and more and more, then we just need more uh, trained professionals, and, and I like to think of us as specialists, and we need many more out there. So it's a good, good field. Thank you for introducing us to this field Thank today. You. Thank you all for joining us. We have to take a short break, but when we return, we'll talk more about radiological technology careers and a great new opportunity for students after they finish their two-year program. Stay tuned, you're watching Campus Conversations. Well, I heard it's like for um, becoming, becoming an X-ray tech, it's like a really good school to go to. I actually just stumbled on Montgomery College's uh, ultrasound department. Um, didn't even know what an incredible uh, school it was until the first day of school. The RT program facility is it's really good. The faculty is really good too. You have a lot of opportunities afterwards, after graduating in RT program. We have this beautiful new building and uh, all state-of-the-art equipment and uh, I think a facility that um, I'm proud to bring my friends to to show it off. All of the equipment that we have here is really state-of-the-art and um, high tech and it's really preparing us better for the field because when we go into the hospitals this is the equipment that they use in the real world. This incredible, incredible facility, this incredible room, we have three great machines, we have every single thing we need on, at, right at our fingertips. I want to be the best that I can be and it just seemed like going to Montgomery College would aid me in, in being the best that I could be. 